The story of IRE is a story deeply intertwined with the story of modern journalism. The turmoil of the 1960s. To say that we are mired in stalemate seems the only realistic, if unsatisfactory, conclusion. Ushered in a new decade of reporting that relentlessly revealed government secrets and exposed wrongdoing. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. By 1975, a president had already resigned, and a book by the two reporters who had exposed the Watergate scandal Did he confirm it? Absolutely. was on its way to becoming a film that would find a place in popular culture. Just follow the money. Uh, suddenly, investigative reporting was hot. Everybody wanted to do it. Uh, all, you know, all the reporters wanted to be Woodward and Bernstein. We realized that there was no, no organization that was uh, dealing with the values of investigative reporting, teaching techniques, that sort of thing. At the Indianapolis Star, investigative reporters Harley Bierce and Murda Pulliam had been exposing corruption among city police. Looking to see how other communities dealt with the problem, Pulliam had turned to New York Times investigative reporter David Burnham, who had exposed corruption among New York City police. It dawned on a whole bunch of people at the same time, like, we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we do this. If I had known this from David and this from so-and-so, we would have saved ourselves enormous time. That simple notion led to a meeting in February 1975 in Reston, Virginia, of just over a dozen of the top investigative reporters from around the country, each with his or her own ideas of how it should be done. We all got together and thought, well, we need to do this, and what are we going to call it, and where are we going to have a meeting? And there were fights. There were disagreements. Um, one was about who's going to be in the membership. Uh, who do you raise funds from? Uh, there was a question of whether or not this ought to be an organization open to all reporters or only investigative reporters, or only investigative reporters that had done a certain kind of work. The legendary muckraker Jack Anderson argued it should be an elite group, with membership being granted only to those who had proven themselves worthy of admission. Uh, but in the end, uh, the, the, when IRE was formed, it was pretty much open to everybody who wanted to be an investigative reporter or was an investigative reporter. The point of IRE was to try to make a larger pool of real, of people who thought of themselves as investigating and not just reporting what the president says or what the mayor says or whatever. Look at what they're doing, not what they're saying. The following year in Indianapolis, IRE held its first national conference featuring some of the biggest names in the business. First of all, it was way successful, which, you know, we weren't sure would be, would happen. Three times more people than we thought would be there. Don Bowles is a 47-year-old investigative reporter for the Arizona Republic. Today, as he attempted to start his car, a bomb went off. Bowles died yesterday from injuries he suffered while investigating the mafia. But news of the murder of one of IRE's first members tempered the enthusiasm. Uh, Don Bowles had just died after being uh, blown up in his car. So people were outraged that this could happen and wondered if this new organization ought to play a role in it. We all knew something had to be done. I mean, I don't think we exactly knew what the heck it was going to be, but we had to do something. Newsday editor Bob Green, who was one of the early advocates of team investigations, convinced the IRE board to organize a team of reporters to go to Arizona to finish Don Bowles' work and send a message. So that everybody who thinks that they can stop a reporter by killing his, him or her and stop their work, they're going to learn you can't. It's the worst thing in the world that you can do. Among the many findings to be revealed by the investigative team during the next several weeks are white-collar swindlers bribing their way to freedom. The final product of the Arizona Project, as it was dubbed, established IRE's reputation as a defender of investigative journalism, but it would test the young organization. We were sued by one subject of a story, and probably when that was a trial, I signed an a IRS tax return that said cash on hand eight dollars potential liabilities three hundred million dollars that's how much we we're being sued for of course we didn't pay a cent over the years IRE has led the way on the critical issues facing investigative journalism and the world from immigration to terrorism to the environment the economy and beyond and just as the founders envisioned, IRE's conferences and training have become a place where investigative journalists help other investigative journalists to do great work.
I left so energized. These days, every time I go to the conference and talk to people who are affiliated with IRE, I'm just so impressed and inspired. IRE's story, it sort of feels like every year I get to go to this amazing like three-day university, is being written by new generations. For a guy like me, IRE has meant everything. Generations who stand on the shoulders. For me, the biggest takeaway has been the networking of the founders. I had no idea that this would be possible. I just, and I thought it was sort of wild-eyed. I think the future looks better than ever, uh, in part because the organization has, has, uh, uh, has established itself so well now. It's a really good feeling to look back and think it's really rewarding. I had something to do with that. I helped start that. That is really, really something.